OTB had set sail with Irish ferries to give you a first-hand view into some of the cities that will play host to the 2023 Rugby World Cup in September. Our journey has taken us to Sherbourg, then on the road to the vibrant city of Nantes. We stopped into La Rochelle to see what French rugby culture is really all about and now we're heading to the sprawling Bordeaux. But before we see what the city has to offer, we made our way to the 42,000-seater Mahmoud Atlantique, one of the venues for this year's Rugby World Cup. Alan, this is where Ireland kick off their World Cup campaign, the 9th of September against Romania at the Mahmoud Atlantique Stadium. You can just imagine the buzz here. This will be where all the excitement starts for Ireland in that first game. Previous World Cups have shown us that you know, if, you, if you're any way off a little bit, even one of the, the lower ranked teams can cause you problems. So yeah. that's the last thing Andy Farrell would want to do. Um, in 2007 here, we played in this stadium here uh, for that World Cup. We started against Namibia in the first game and we had Georgia the week after. So those first two games, the perception was that we were going to start really well, win those two games, get loads of confidence. The whole squad would get game time. Yeah and uh, Eddie O'Sullivan, the coach at the time. Hindsight's a great thing, but he wanted to start his strongest team, get a good result against Namibia, and maybe I was one of the ones who wasn't starting, that the rest of the squad would be play against Georgia in the second one. But Namibia performance wasn't great, so mm -hmm. um, he picked a strong side again, and it ended up being a disappointing World Cup. The point I'm making is you underestimate someone in the lower rank teams in, in a World Cup and you can have problems. It is a tricky one and it's, it'll be interesting to see how Andy Farrell sets up. Do you think he will go with a stronger side? Usually when you make a lot of changes you load the bench with the experience and the, the guys who've, who've been there and done that. The first two games you want, you ideally any coach for any of the teams would want to start well and um, it's going to start here. It's going to, mm -hmm. this is where the excitement, this car park is going to be full of Irish. It's a wonderful stadium, some good memories there as well. 2000, Munster beating Toulouse here in that Heineken Cup semi-final back then, as it was called then, um, to reach our first final against Northampton a few weeks later. We were, it was totally unexpected, but those scenes and those memories kind of live with you. And what do we know about Romania? As you mentioned, it's a bit of the unknown. They're ranked 19th in the world rankings. Were you played against them yourself? What sort of team were they? Yeah, I made my debut against Romania in 99 <laughs> at the World Cup in, in the old Lansdowne Road. I think it is unknown. Um, as I said, some of their players play in the, the couple in Italy. Um, there's a couple playing in France in, 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 in the second division in France as well. The level of um, some of the top tier nations, there's, there's a sizable gap, an obvious gap. But as I said, you know, you don't under you don't want to underestimate them. You can be guaranteed it'll be physical and they'll really try and get stuck into Ireland. We still have to shouldn't be afraid to talk about Ireland potentially winning a World Cup because no, you're right. what we've seen recently is that on their day, when they play well, they can beat anybody. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean it's gonna happen. But we should talk about that and shouldn't be afraid and say, God, we've got to play this down. There's probably seven or eight teams that can potentially win it. And, and there's a lot of factors in a World Cup. Yeah, but going, taking all that away and not hiding from the fact that Ireland may, uh, we, we're all hoping they'll do well. It starts with Romania. You try and build a bit of momentum for the next week. And then you're obviously into South Africa, Scotland, all that kind of stuff, which can define where you go. But you mess up in the first game here against Romania, well then you can you have, have a knock-on effect for the performances going yeah, forward. You want to get that Not a first similar situation in Japan, but mm -hmm. tiny bit of similarity. Japan were a, a stronger team, better prepared team, and a very dangerous team at that World Cup. But they beat Ireland and they really stuttered Ireland's progress and performance. So, you know, Ireland will should. There's no guarantees in life or sport, but they should beat Romania here in this first game. The next day, we headed to one of the most remarkable sites in France, the Dune of Pelais or Dune du Pelais. It is 60 kilometers southwest of Bordeaux and is about an hour long drive to get there. Besides the car parking fee, the site is free for visitors. Alan, look at this. 
incredible. Yeah, it's beautiful. We're here in uh, Dune de Pila. Dune de Pila. We're, yeah, uh, nice we're up fairly high. It's the tallest sand dune in Europe, and obviously it's very windy. Your hair is <laughs> going 90. blustering Thanks, in the I wind. Need that. <laughs> you were all worried about your hair there. Just let it let it blow. Let it be. Let, let, it, be let free, it blow yeah? in the wind. It's really windy up here. But what a sight! My yeah. God, it's just incredible. Amazing. 800 BC, I think they reckon. Um, that they found some archaeological instruments. Yeah. Uh, a funeral urn here in, two, in 1913, and they reckon it went back to 800 BC. So this place is here a long time. A long, long time. A long time. And it's less than an hour outside the city as well, so it's easy to get to. What a sight down there, you know, for for people coming here for the yeah. World Cup. This is a definitely a must-see must place. See. Because there'll be lots of Irish fans should definitely come here. Yeah. They should stop here. It's just worth really it. It's should. beautiful. Yeah. And just to talk about Johnny Sexton for a minute, this will be his final games for Ireland. We hope that he goes out on, on a high. You know, what a year it's been so far to win the Grand Slam, obviously the Test Series as well in New Zealand. So this is the, the final the final showdown for Johnny yeah, Sexton. And, and we hope he gets what he per deserves. Persistence uh, from him. Um, you go back to 2019, it ended up really frustrating and di and disappointing that World Cup for Ireland and you know you felt maybe that was his last chance to kind of go beyond the quarter final play in a semi final or a final but um, sport can be cruel sometimes and I know from experience myself it extended my career maybe by a year or two when you have some of those injuries and breaks so you can you can kind of recalibrate strengthen the body in other areas and all that kind of stuff so but he's he's been a brilliant player mentally very strong and Alan, just how important is Johnny Sexton to this Ireland team? R really important, and I think he's shown that, particularly in the last couple of years with the success in New Zealand, the Six Nations. Um, he didn't play against Australia in November. Jack Crowley went in there, Ireland won. Uh, Ross Byrne came off the bench against France for 30 minutes when Johnny Sexton had to go off, uh, which was really encouraging because if Johnny Sexton doesn't play or get picked up an injury at the World Cup, do they panic and do they scramble and say, well, you know, what do the opposition think? Are they going to target him? Of course they are. Now, he's without been, Johnny, Ireland aren't going to... Well, he's been targeted you know, all his think. life, and most uh, crucial fly halves in that position mm. have been. And that's... I, I used to be a wing forward. I'd be trying to go after him because he's such a good player. He's really important to Ireland, not just from the playing point of view and his decision-making in the field, but his presence. He brings that kind of real steel. I think the belief from other teams will be physically if you go after Ireland that little bit of a template from from probably Leinster last year with La Rochelle and and maybe the Bulls in the in the in the URC I think they've coped really well with the big physical teams that they've played in the last little while and you know Johnny is going to be targeted there's no doubt he's going to be targeted so how do we protect him do we start him in the first game against Romania do we keep him well he's got to come back from the injury obviously and um, needs a good pre-season um, he's obviously at his age his time has been managed very well we have a bit more belief now in that number 10 position you know that they have back up there is Ross Byrne he's got time in the Six Nations that he is ready to come in it's brilliant to see him back in the mix and maybe that burst of confidence that he needed, particularly in November, kicking that winning penalty and, and those 30 minutes against France. You know, he played really well when he came on against France and Ireland's performance actually didn't, they didn't sit back and go, we're going to play safe. They kept playing and I genuinely believe Ireland are either going out in the quarterfinals or if they get to a semi-final situation, I think they're gone mentally to a different level then and I don't think any team will want to play them in a semi-final. Is this the best Ireland team that you've ever seen go to a World Cup? Probably, I think, yeah. I, I think if you the balance right across the team, there's been magnificent players in certain Irish teams for many, many years, world-class players. Collectively, I think, yes. What better way to see Bordeaux than on the bikes? Oh, you definitely. Ready to go for a yeah. cycle? The sun is back out. Let's go. Let's do it. Right. Come on. Don't see knock if you anyone down me. now, please. <laughs>
The cycle path around the River Garonne offers visitors plenty of restaurants and cafes where you can stop and enjoy the many views the city has to offer. but not if you're trying to beat an ex-Irish loose forward in a race. That was a good race. <laughs> I think I won the race, Willie. Woo, out of breath now. We're going to stop off. Yes, we That's will. That's it. What a way to see the city. Oh, it's awesome. Unbelievable. We had a little race there and uh, <laughs> she's claiming victory. But I did, I bet you. Maybe, maybe. Let's Ooh. go and... We'll see the old city. Okay, cool. Brilliant. The city is home to 250,000 locals and on a warm afternoon, most of them can be seen enjoying the sights and sounds. The city is linked with bridges and trains and is worth getting lost in on a sunny day. Bordeaux is home to some of the most incredible French architecture, where Irish visitors can visit the Cathedral of St. Andrew, the Statue of the Madonna and Child, and the Angel of Liberty. Alan, this is the old town in Bordeaux. It's lovely to walk through the streets and you can just imagine what the atmosphere will be like when all the Irish arrive in September. Yeah, well, it's pretty, isn't it? Um, we go up this way and have a look. All yeah. these lovely little cafes, bars, restaurants. The architecture, I, I just, honestly, I wasn't really good at my history in school, my Irish history, but I'd love to know more about these buildings, oh, how old incredible. they are. They're just so beautiful and mm -hmm. there's a sense of I think for Irish fans that'll be in here, it's a lovely little square, food, drinks. It's a rugby mad city as well, you know. They love their rugby here. Mm -hmm. um, obviously there's football here as well and other sports, but to walk around and, and you know see the little bars and the way you can sit out, the climate, we've had it today for people, for Irish people here, just to, to kind of be able to wear a t-shirt and chill out and relax and meet people. That kind of adds to the whole experience oh, of does, going to definitely. a World Cup. All these little side streets here, how good are they? Wake up in the morning, go out, have your croissant, your coffee. Oh, that's what I love about chill out. being in France, just going out, getting the croissant in the morning. And you can't walk, literally 10 steps and there's another one. Some of the Irish, of course, will be getting up, having a little beer uh, <laughs> to start, start their day and uh, <laughs> sing a holidays. few songs. You know, we have a great reputation of traveling worldwide, mm -hmm. singing songs, being merry, no trouble. I think this is a lovely starting point for the Irish fans because you're out of the big city in Paris. Um, there's a little bit of space here, accessibility to get here uh, for people, you know, coming on the ferry, driving yeah, down driving here. Up. All right, Ashley, we're coming into Place de la Bourge. This Go is ahead. one of the most recognizable places in Bordeaux, built from 1730 to 1775. <laughs> it's on the UNESCO World Heritage List, this place. Wow. All these buildings here, incredible. It's a really nice, like we said in Nantes, the, these are meeting places. Meet by the fountain for the tickets or to catch up with mates or friends. Um, and you can definitely see this being one of them for yeah. sure. And this has been a lovely experience really to, to see, see all of France, see France like we have in Nantes, La Rochelle and, and Bordeaux. They've been really special because it's been, it's, uh, you get a feel that there's an anticipation from the French people as well. You do. About you get what's coming in September. Yeah. What are you looking forward to most about this World Cup? Working at it? Yeah, whatever. a little bit of both. You know, I can't wait to, to meet some of the fans that have travelled over. Obviously, being at the games, there's nothing better than the buzz when you're at a game, especially when it's a World Cup game, Ireland involved against South Africa, Romania, Tonga, whoever it is, you know, just that buzz of it all. That's what I'm probably most looking forward to. The buzz of the whole thing here, you know, I played in a World Cup in France. Um, it wasn't a memorable World Cup for Ireland, mm -hmm. but I, I've, I still have some good memories. I didn't get to play in 2007, but um, it is, it becomes very exciting here. The people, you can feel the atmosphere building, um, and, and 2023, come September, is going to be special all over France. And Ireland beating Romania. Tonga. Tonga. South the Africa. The Springboks, the world <laughs> champions. 
And the Scottish. Scotland. <laughs> and then we don't mind who we play in the quarter final. We're going to have a big one there, hopefully. No, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> one game at a time. Players still in me. It's going to be incredible. Fingers crossed. We can't it's wait. A good one. We'll enjoy it either way. It was a brilliant few days. Yes, it definitely was. Come on, we have a stroll over here. It has been the adventure of a lifetime and we have one more trip back to Sherbrooke to catch our ride home. After all the excitement of the fantastic French cities and getting a hands-on look at where Ireland will be battling for the World Cup trophy, we can't wait to stretch out and relax on the overnight voyage back to Dublin aboard the WB Yates. It's a perfect way to bookend the experience and a great way to recharge after our whirlwind tour. You too can experience France like we have and be sure to book your very own adventure with Irish Ferries in September. OTB is here in France in partnership with Irish Ferries. See travel differently.